Hello there, my fellow Xenos Hunters, and welcome to yet another video about one of the Deathwatch Specialist Space Marines. Before I get into the thick of it, I had a small question I wanted to ask you about. Since the Deathwatch, just like any Space Marine Force, does feature more regular Astartes brothers, like Tactical Marines, Devastator Marines, or Assault Marines, I wondered if you guys wanted me to cover those as well. I'm not asking because I'm lazy and I want to skip them, but because I've already covered those kinds of squads in my Space Marine Forces playlist. Now, even though those guys do kinda do the same thing as they do in their own chapters, they do have a few bits of extra lore since they do serve in the Death Watch. There's also a few unique heroes of their own specialization. I guess what I'm asking here is, do you still want to see videos about them under these circumstances? Do let me know in the comments below. With that out of the way, today's topic is going to be the Death Watch Epistolary. Word to the wise first, so as to avoid some confusion, in this episode I will be referring to the epistolary as a librarian also. That is mainly because epistolary is more or less a rank of librarian, and the two are not entirely separate entities. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a couple of things about them, shall we? A Death Watch epistolary is a potent battle psyker of the elite Death Watch, whose formidable powers were unlocked while completing a vigil as a lower rank of Lexiconium. Often these elite librarians return to the Death Watch later in their lives in response to a personal request of a Watch Commander, or to complete an unfinished matter they uncovered during their formative years. Sometimes they return to the Long Watch simply because they have come to believe the dire threat of the Xenos deserves their full attention. An epistolary wields devastating power, bestriding the battlefields with fire and wielding the powers of the elements themselves. As part of a kill team, their support is invaluable to combating the alien menace, especially against the psychers of the Xenos. Often, the lowest-ranked Space Marine Librarians, known as Lexiconiums, commonly undertake a vigil within the Death Watch. It is rare but not unknown for individuals to unlock their psychic powers through their experiences during the Long Vigil, raising them to the rank of Codicier or even Epistolary while still in the Watch. Such renowned individuals hold a high rank within the Death Watch, and are liable to be consulted on all major undertakings. Their powers of precognition offer a great opportunity to rend the veil on the potential outcomes of certain missions, and they have ways of uncovering hidden knowledge that would be unreachable by any other means. As part of a kill team, an epistolary wields devastating powers, capable of incinerating hordes of enemies and entire nests of aliens. He bestrides the battlefield with fire and wielding lightning with the power of an angry god. Very few foes will stand before the coming of an epistolary as their minds fill with terror and webs of confusion. Those few that can resist the psychic onslaught must face the terrible fury of the epistolary's force weapon a blade blazing with the white-hot certainty of his own will. The most important call made for a Death Watch epistolary is to take to the field against Xenos Psychas. Many alien species encountered by Death Watch kill teams boast warp dabblers and sorcerers of some talent that make pacts and sell themselves willingly to the ruinous powers. Others, like the Eldar, have their own esoteric methods to shape the warp to their will. Yet others have innate psychic powers that can render them immune to conventional weapons, dominate or stupefy even the superhuman space marines. All of these and more represent dire threats to an unprepared kill team without psychic support. A librarian can warn of such perils before they are encountered, or at least in time to act against them decisively with targeted attacks. 
an epistolary can overcome the most potent alien psyker coven, or protect his battle brothers from an overwhelming psychic miasma. With an epistolary present, a battle is fought on two planes, both the physical and the psychic, and librarians are especially equipped for this task. Their awesome powers are channeled through the conductive wiring of a psychic hood, a piece of war gear linked directly into the librarian's brain. The psychic hood extends the wearer's consciousness so that he can feel manipulation of the local warp space and counteract it. Augmetic crystals in the psychic hood help him focus and enhance his strength in the battle of wills that follows. With their psychic defenses stripped away, aliens easily fall prey to conventional kill team tactics. Time spent in the Death Watch offers a librarian a unique opportunity to learn about alien psychers and to study their methods for manipulating the Imperium. A Death Watch epistolary is deeply knowledgeable about such matters. A veteran of many encounters, not just with Xenos creatures, but their artifacts and structures too. The reading of the Xenos mind, while disgusting, is acknowledged as an unpleasant art form in its own right that can expose their murky web of motivations and alien thought processes to a full examination by human logic. Death Watch epistolaries excel at countering and combating Xenos psychers and alien witches, subverting their powers and breaking their will with a single thought. By the time a battle brother attains the rank of epistolary, he has become a true master of psychic warfare and has learned the strengths and weaknesses of the alien mind and how best to exploit them. Psychometry, the art of object reading, opens insight into the operation and purpose of things made by alien hands, even long after that race's extinction. On many occasions, an epistolary's examination of a past relic has prevented future disaster. This was achieved by correctly predicting the resurgence of an alien threat at a specific site, or by revealing a key weakness that can be used to bring about their doom. Such prolonged exposure to Xenos also places particularly stringent demands on an epistolary. The gradual insinuation of alien thoughts and concepts into the librarian's mind is an ever-present peril that must be guarded against. Every piece of knowledge won can bring with it the seeds of potential destruction in the form of a mimetic trap or psychic poison. Against these perils and many others, the epistolary must match the power of his will and he must maintain a blinkered mind, always close to new concepts and alien designs. He must master his own mind and know it always to be his own, uninfluenced and pure to the very end. Some notable Death Watch epistolaries include Epistolary Axinaton This guy is a librarian of the White Consul's chapter, who has only recently come to serve in the Jericho Rage. Lean-featured, dark-haired, and possessing a grimly superior demeanor, Axinaton is caustic and blunt to his peers. Never does he allow a flaw that he perceives rest unmentioned nor a failing unpunished, and his manner has created a reputation for sneering arrogance and pedantry among some. Despite all this, he is a warrior of unquestionable ability, and a psyker of great power, a power that he can wield with the subtlety of a torturer's razor or the brute force of an executioner's axe. As a past veteran of war against the Tyranid Manus, he has already provided valuable insight for his peers. Axinaton has been fascinated by the secret nature of the Death Watch's mission in the Jericho Reach since learning of it, and his hungry mind has devoured all that he can of the lore and history of the Omega Vault. He is the constant but often silent presence during gatherings of the Chamber of Vigilance, sometimes speaking only to condemn. Epistolary Sabazius The archives of the Death Watch record that Brother Sabazius has served as a librarian in the Exorcist chapter for almost a century. At a certain point, he was dispatched by his chapter master 
to fight alongside the Inquisition to scour a Xenophage cult which had taken hold among the nobility of the pleasure world of Leucosia. The legends of that world still recount the day the vengeful librarian and his battle brothers descended from the pristine skies upon pillars of fire to deliver judgment upon the fallen. So effective was that operation that millennia later, Leucosia is counted among the most pious of shrine worlds, entirely dedicated to the purest of the emperor's saints. It was during this operation that Sabasius drew the attention of members of the Ordo Zenos, and a decade later he answered the call to stand a vigil of the Long Watch at Watch Fortress Arioch. Epistolary Sabasius was gifted with several psychic abilities counted as rare among battle psychers, not least of which was the ability to discern the soul of the enemy in the great beyond, and to assault it directly with powers unleashed by his own spirit. Thus, Sabasius was able to bear witness to the soul death of his foes directly, and it was this aspect of his powers that led him to the conclusion that the beast of Andronicus Prime was not a myriad foes, but a single entity. The deed for which Epistolary Sabasius shall forever be known is the moment he mustered those battle brothers nearest to him and led them into the infernal depths of the crater made by the concentrated land strikes of the Death Watch assault fleet. Reports indicate that Sabasius looked about him, saw into the very souls of those who had answered his call, and in an instant judged them equal to the task he undertook. Before the others could intervene or join them at the crater's lip, Sabasius simply stepped forth into the superheated updraft and was gone. Mere seconds later, the battle brothers who had answered his call followed his example and were gone, their fate unknown. Whatever transpired within the mantle of Andronicus Prime, it must surely have been a battle to equal the greatest legends of the Adeptus Astartes a battle for which the name of Epistolary Sabasius shall forever be remembered in the annals of the Death Watch. Epistolary Zadkiel Epistolary Zadkiel is a powerful and honored librarian of the Dark Angels chapter, seconded to the Death Watch and a prominent leader in the Akaros Salient. His potent psychic abilities have banished demons without number, shrieking back into the warp, and his force staff has reaped a bloody toll against the heretic hordes of the Celebos war zone. Known to possess an aloof and proud attitude, Zadkiel is rarely forthcoming about his past, but there are a few facts known to his battle brothers in the Death Watch. As a young lexiconium, Zadkiel studied under the Dark Angel's Grand Master of Librarians, no less a personality than Ezekiel himself. Zadkiel proved himself under his tutor's strict training, and swiftly ascended the ranks of the Librarium. In time, Zadkiel earned the right to be examined by Ezekiel for induction into the mysterious inner circle of the Dark Angels. Ezekiel dispatched his former student to fight alongside the elite first company of the Death Wing for a number of years. Zadkiel once again excelled, owning his own battle skills and developing a talent not unlike that of his teacher, an ability to read the tides of war and predict the flow of strategy with uncanny precision. Once, Zadkiel even crossed blades with the enigmatic fallen, Cypher, during the so-called Battle of Screams, an encounter that left the librarian with a bionic eye and a bitter heart. Zadkiel's accomplishments during one notable campaign earned him a special honor, and the Grand Master of the Deathwing himself granted Zadkiel the right to bear Deathwing heraldry upon his armor from that moment onward. The Librarian regularly assists skill teams with strategic and tactical planning for missions in the Akaros Salient, and Zadkiel has led a number of assaults himself upon key Chaos Space Marine leaders in the Blood Trinity region. Zadkiel regularly meets with other Space Marines seconded to the Death Watch from successor chapters of the Dark Angels and he has built a rapport with many of the Space Marines who are very far from familiar surroundings. And this, my friends, 
has been what I wanted to tell you about Deathwatch epistolaries for today. Would you like having one of them by your side in battle? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor Protects.